In this video, we're going to be covering how to install the Thermal Alert application. This is an addition to Fortrix WLIR-IR application. And what Thermal Alert will do is enable email alerts to be sent. So let's go ahead and get started on the installation here. All right, so I've downloaded the thermal alert set up here. Uh, as of the time of writing, it's version 1.2. We will be publishing updates. Any feature requests that you may have, please let us know. We will add that to our logs here. Um, here we can go ahead and just click on the application. And you're gonna be prompted with a Windows protected your PC box, this is okay. It is a new application, it has to build reputation. If you just go ahead and click run anyway, it will start the installation process. And it's very, very quick, depending on your machine, it'll take just a couple of seconds. And the first screen that we'll see is the actual activation step. This is where you'll be entering your email and your key. If you don't have a key, please contact us. There is a link here that you can use to contact us. Uh, so let me go ahead and actually enter my keys here. All right, so I entered my email as well as my activation key. And now I'm at the second part that just, as soon as I hit activate, this is what shows up. Now I'm at the getting started stage. Again, the documentation is built right into the software. There's no need to go find this anywhere. We wanted to keep it super simple here. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit settings, which is our next step here. And this is where we will be configuring the email alert itself. So the first part is basically your SMTP server settings. If you don't know what these are or you don't have them, you know, ask your IT department. The reason we didn't include one for you in here is because when you use a third party, first of all, your data goes through that third party. Second of all, you normally want to have your own. That way it doesn't get caught in spam. If we had our, our domain, here for you and our domain gets used up a lot, gets caught in spam filters and now it becomes a spam trap for every other filter. So it's better to use your own here. So I'll be setting this up in a second here with ours. And then at the bottom, you're gonna be basically configuring your email alert. So in this case, the to email. So who is this email alert going to? The from, I recommend keeping your from the same as your SMTP username. It's gonna be the same email essentially and your subject is basically gonna be whatever you wanna output for the alarm. Notice there's some placeholder text throughout, message text, this is subject and message text are optional. I'd recommend subject, definitely keeping that one. Uh, message text, this is really something for you if you wanna have a next step essentially for let's say we have a guard, the guard needs to check the attachment. So this is where you would add that in. So let me go ahead and configure these here. All right, so I've gone ahead and added my information here for a quick test. Um, notice how the emails are matching up here. Make sure it's the full email for each one. And I've added some subjects or subject as well as a message text. I'm gonna go ahead and click save settings. So we completed step one. Your next step is to enable the alarms within the Fortric application under system settings, general, snapshot, alert, image only. Make sure that's actually checked. If you don't have this checked, there's no way you can get email alerts. You need to have some type of recognition for who that person is. So let me go ahead and actually enable that. All right, and as the instructions say, I'm just gonna go system settings. I'm gonna go here to snapshot alert image only. This is the only one I wanna have. I do wanna show temperature data. Again, this depends on your configuration, but you do need alert image set up. This is the only way you'll get alerts. And storage, again, I'm using the default storage. If you notice in settings, the first part of step settings was the location. If you've configured this in different network shares or something like that, please make sure you set the right path. So this looks good. And step three is now to start the monitor. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually start it and notice my status changes to active. At this point, all you have to do is just minimize this. You don't have to touch this again. Um, if your computer reboots, you will have to go back into settings. 
just confirm everything, save settings, and start the monitor again. There is that manual step currently. So just make sure if you have this ready, just minimize it, keep your Fortran application running, 